Welcome back to Screen Share. Danielle, it's time for the day's Tell the Tape, which, by the way, is one of my favorite parts of the show, so here's how it works. We're going to play a piece of tape, and whenever either one of us wants to chime in on something, we simply say pause, we'll stop the video and discuss it. Alex, tell us what we're about to see. Okay, guys, for today's Tale of the Tape, we're going to listen to part of a speech from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in Arizona over the weekend. DeSantis was speaking at a Turning Point USA rally. That's the conservative youth organization. It was all in support of Republican Senate nominee Blake Masters and Republican gubernatorial nominee Carrie Lake. But as you'll hear, DeSantis went pretty big picture with his attacks on Democrats. Let's roll it. And remember, pause it whenever you like. If you look around this country and you survey the damage and the destruction that's been done by leftist politicians in cities and states all around the country, the fact of the matter is when leftist government takes hold, society flounders. Crime goes uh, up. They release people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, what do you, you think, know, Danielle? When, <laughs> I, I, this, this is what I'll say. And I, I knew that I was going to pause before he completed his first sentence. Um, and, and, and here's the reality. Republicans love, this, this group of extremist Republicans love to create this doom and gloom forecast of cities, as, which I happen to live in, right? I, I live in New York City. I do not walk out of my door and see, you know, trash and homelessness and, and, and you know, anarchy brewing everywhere. You know, any time that we are talking about cities, I, I want people to actually see the real view of what is happening, which is people going about their lives, right? The times when we have had a, a, an affront to how cities are operating was when Donald Trump decided to hold COVID relief hostage because he wanted to, you know, put the governors in blue states on their heels into a begging position in order to keep their people alive. Right. Like whenever if it, if it weren't for cities, these red places that they hold up as real America wouldn't exist because they don't have the economy in order to have it exist. So I just I hate the attacks on cities and people who live in cities as if we're the ones that are the problem. I mean, like, Danielle, fair point on, on the economy. That's a fact. But I will say, Danielle, I mean, Though the rhetoric was, a, a, I don't know, a bit extreme, I suppose, I do think that the governor has a point. I mean, look at New York, your city. You guys elected Mayor Adams, a former police officer, in part because of some of the crime issues. Look at San Francisco. They recently recalled their district attorney because of his unwillingness to prosecute individuals as it pertains to certain types of crime. So there clearly is something going on in the country right now where even cities that I think most of us would argue are, are liberal bastions, if you will, are looking at what's going on and saying, you know, we got some problems here. We need to have people to address them as it pertains to crime. And we need district attorneys who are going to go after criminals regardless of the crime. And, and I know there's a lot of debate about this. But the voters are sort of speaking, I would argue, Danielle, by the individuals that they are selecting. And that is not going on in just red states. It's also going on in blue places as well. But let's roll tape, guys. People back on the street, they don't prosecute. You have homeless, you have drugs, you have higher taxes. Everything you can think of, they destroy their communities. And right, it shouldn't I want to pause be that tape. way. I mean, I... I want to pause tape, guys. So, I mean, he's making a, another good point. Uh, there was an interesting article that came out a couple months ago from the New York Times that talked about how many people and how many businesses are leaving California for places like Texas. And part of the concern with Texas Republicans was that, oh, my God, all of these California liberals are coming. They're going to turn Texas blue because they've seen such a huge migration of former California residents and California businesses move to Texas. So there is something to say that people are looking at taxes. They are looking at the homelessness issue in places like Los Angeles County with Skid Row or even in the nation's capital of D.C. where we're not really addressing these issues of homelessness and mental health issues that people are clearly facing who are, who are not living in sheltered places. And so it, it is a concern, and I, and I think that if you look at people's feet, as a late Milton Freeman once said, look at where people are going and it will tell you what they're trying to escape from to where they're trying to go to. And Danielle, whether you like it or not, a lot of people are trying to go to some red states. And I will say that the reason why they're trying to go to red states is because living in places like New York and like California are incredibly expensive. And when we are not seeing uh, the cost of cost of living, right, 
uh, move in the same in the same direction as wages in this country, right? You are obviously going to see massive discrepancies when you are passing uh, tax benefits once again for the top one percent of this country. Where and this was a Democrat that just did this, right? Out of the Inflation Act, Kirsten Cinema decided that you know what, we're not going to take that fourteen billion dollars of income right from hedge fund managers because apparently they need more protection than regular Americans because we all know what Kirsten Cinema is setting up her next act to be and to do. So I think that there is truth, but here is the thing. I say to get to the core of it. You don't stop uh, crime by putting more cops on the street. That never works. You don't stop homelessness by locking up the homeless. That doesn't work either. These are systemic problems that have to do with giving people more opportunity and an actual living wage that matches our inflation, right? Where we're looking at tax codes where over 30% of your income is going to taxes, and yet I'm driving on roads and I'm wondering as I'm going through cratered potholes where my money is actually going. Or I'm looking at the public school system and I'm wondering, Really? Because you don't have a 100% graduation rate. And so where are the tax dollars going there? And so I think that this is a distribution issue as well as what we value in this country. And it isn't average American. And so, so, Danielle, but, but, but what do you say, though, that the fact that you have places that are led by people who happen to be Democrats that are having these issues. I'm not talking about the federal tax code. Let's break it down to the state level. We can go down to local municipalities if we want. These problems still persist. And again, that's not to say that they don't persist in red states, and perhaps at even a greater percentage, if you will. But nevertheless, to many of the things you just raised that I would argue many Democrats probably believe, I think even some Republicans might even believe, there's still issues that are causing people to leave those places for red states. I mean, how do you explain that phenomenon? Because it certainly is I mean, happening. The, the phenomenon to me is during COVID, where rents in this city skyrocketed out of control and no one voted for stabilization, where you're looking at one bedrooms in New York City that on average are going for $4,000 a month. Of course, people are going to flee that. And by virtue of opening up remote work, right, where people are no longer tethered to their location based on where they are working. And now you can work wherever so long as you have a laptop. And I'm talking about the privileged class. I'm talking about the desk and the office working class that is no longer, you know, needing to go into the office. You're going to go to a place where your money is going to go further. Mm -hmm. No, you know what, Danielle, I actually agree with you 150 percent. And, and I would even say, Danielle, I, I may have a different policy perspective on how I would want to address those issues. But when you look at a lot of polling data, and you and I were talking about this before the show started, a lot of Republicans have issues with extreme wealth and, and, and with there not being a distribution, if you will. A lot of people saying, I work hard, I work 40, 60, 80 hours a week. And I'm barely freaking making it. And I think that's an issue where Republicans and Democrats actually agree on. Danielle, I think that's one of those issues where you can sort of bring both sides together, where people are saying, you know, I think the people at the top have a lot, but what about the rest of us who are really working our butts off and we're barely making it? 